Hello, hello, hello. Happy December. What the heck? How? How is it already the holidays? We are in the thick of it. Um, welcome to the Common Education Podcast. Let's talk hair. Uh, my name is Araz. I am your host. Uh, this is my passion project, this podcast and combed education in general. This is my contribution to the industry I have been in for quite some time. And uh, I've learned a lot. I've made a lot of mistakes, lots of lesson learned. And so on this podcast, I share some of my learnings. Uh, we talk about social media. We talk about hairstylist life, hair salon life, business owner, sweet owner, mindset, chemicals, hair, all of the things that we um, our experience with in this industry. So today, 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 we are going to bust some myths about developer and more importantly, zero lift developers. So I think in order to understand why there are zero lift developers on the market and more importantly, how they work, we need to understand developer. So this is heavy focus on developers. So some things you need to know about developers, some fun facts. So developer on its own is acidic. This is all going to make sense in a second. Okay, developer on its own is acidic. This means that it will actually constrict the cuticle layers and tighten up the hair versus Permanent hair color, for example, is alkaline. It swells, it softens, it diffuses. So acidity does the opposite, it constricts. So if you hypothetically um, apply straight developer on someone's hair, it will corrode the hair and cause porosity. It will not open the cuticle layers and lighten the hair. I know, mind blowing, right? So fun fact, a very dated method for pre-softening the hair was to use straight developer. Uh, maybe you still do this. Maybe you know of people who do this if hair is really resistant. They say pre-soften with developer, that'll open up the cuticles and then you can get the color in. Um, that's not uh, how that works. Actually, the only reason that that could work because I've argued with people about this. And they're like, no, it works. I'm like, okay, fine, it works. It's fine, that's fine. It's not working the way you think it's working though. So the only way that that could work is that it creates excess porosity in the hair. And we all know that porous hair up takes color darker and faster. So we are under the illusion that we get better gray coverage when using developer to pre-soften. So what it's not doing is it's not opening the cuticle layer so the color can penetrate. What it is doing is it's actually poking holes in the cuticle layer, creating porosity, giving you a better quote unquote deposit. Um, another fun fact about developers. So back in the day, people used to put straight peroxide in their hair and go in the sun to lighten their hair. <laughs> put sun in. <laughs> just like sun in, okay? Um, the peroxide would essentially corrode the hair, create porosity, and the UV rays plus the peroxide would expose some undertone. This is why people like me with very dark hair who thought they could be blonde, um, our hair turned red or orange. It was bad, 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 bad. So a couple of fun facts for you. So let's talk a little bit about developer in the hair coloring world, not necessarily with bleaching. So I think I had another podcast episode that talked about the developer's role in bleaching hair, and that is just time. So the higher the developer you use with your bleach, the faster you are going to get to your destination. It does not mean that 40 volume will get you lighter. It will just get you there faster along with some catastrophic damage, but to each their own. So what even is developer? Do we have an understanding of what developer is? So at its base, it is hydrogen peroxide. Chemically, it's H2O2, two parts hydrogen, two parts oxygen, along with many additives, including um, stabilizers, surfactants, solvents, water, thickening agents, conditioning agents, all of that is in your peroxide or your developer. But no, just using hydrogen peroxide, like from Target for your kids always in place of developer will not work for those of you that are rebels, don't do it. 
So let's talk a little bit about different developer strengths. So in the US, developers typically have a numeric value followed by the word volume. So in other countries, a, a developer is labeled with a percentage. So here's a breakdown. 10 volume to us is 3%. 20 volume is 6%. 30 volume is 9%. And 40 volume is 12%. The percentage is the amount of hydrogen peroxide in each bottle. So for example, in a bottle of 10 volume, you have 3% hydrogen peroxide. What you need to know is this, developer in combination with oxidative hair color, which with an alkali, which they all have alkalizing agents, um, is essentially how the hair color process works. So it's not just developer, it's not just the alkalizer, it's the combination of the two that is going to determine your final result. So think of the developer as the gas in your car tank, okay? And when you mix that developer and the color together, it's like filling up your tank and pushing down on the gas pedal. It's go time. So mixing the two ingredients initiates this hair coloring process to begin. The hair color, along with the alkalizer used, is what is going to determine how far you are going to go. The developer's role is this. Number one, it is going to develop the dyes. So in a tube or a bottle of hair color, there are tiny colorless molecules called precursors. And it's the oxygen in the developer, the O2, right? That releases and then develops those dyes so that we see the color. The developer also delivers those dyes into the hair. It's the gas, right? It's taking those dyes, releasing the oxygen, and then delivering those dyes into the cortex, okay? The more oxygen that is available in your developer based on your volume of peroxide, in combination with the type and amount of alkalizer used will determine how far into the hair those dyes get developed and delivered. Lastly, developer's job is to fracture melanin and create undertone. So the amount of oxygen that the developer releases, again, it's based on the available oxygen, depending on the volume, plus the alkalizer in the color. That is what's going to determine how much melanin that is fractured and how much undertone you expose. So developers, three main jobs, develop the dyes so that we see the color, deliver the dyes into the cortex where they can live, and then to uh, fracture melanin and create undertone. So when you're doing a permanent hair color process, it's this dance of lift, deposit, lift, deposit, lift, deposit. It's not the first 20 minutes are lift and the next 20 minutes are deposit. It's all happening simultaneously. So now that we had a little recap on developer, let's talk about this whole idea of a zero lift developer. So chances are, if you were to call the manufacturers of this zero lift developer and ask them what the volume is or what the percentage of hydrogen peroxide is, they would not say it's zero. If it's zero, nothing can happen. So you might as well put water in your color. Like if there is, if then it's just water and conditioning agents and solvents and like it's not developer, it's not going to develop anything. So what is highly likely is that a zero lift developer is somewhere around a five volume or 1.5% hydrogen peroxide. I want you to know this though, the role of the developer, three main roles, right? Delivering the dyes, developing the dyes, fracturing melanin. The role of the developer doesn't change because it's a five volume. It is still going to develop and deliver the dyes and it can still fracture melanin. 
What matters most when you're using a zero lift developer is the color that it's mixed with. Because your lifting ability, how much lift you're going to get from your color is in the tube. Not It's not the developer. It's the alkalizer that's in the tube. What kind of alkalizer that is used, how much of it is in there, that's going to determine how much lift you can achieve with your developer. How much oxygen is going to get released from the available oxygen in each developer is determined by the alkalizer used and how much, okay? So this is where um, knowing a little bit about the different alkalizers is going to be your friend. So if the color line that this zero lift developer is intended to be used with is using AMP as an alkalizer, you are not going to get any lift and you're just gonna get a straight deposit, which is likely the case. I haven't looked, I'm assuming here, okay? So say there's a brand that has a zero lift developer, the color that you're supposed to use with that zero lift developer is an AMP based color. AMP is not strong enough to give you any lift. And then that five volume or that 1.5% hydrogen peroxide is going to develop those dyes. It's going to deliver those dyes and you're going to get a result. If this color line that is using a zero lift developer is intended to be used with their color and the alkalizer that they're using is MEA, there is a slight chance that you may get some lift depending on the texture and level of the hair. But most likely, most likely, there is a heavier dye load in the color to counteract and deposit down any potential lift. Now, if the color line that the zero lift developer is intended to be used with is using ammonia as the alkalizer, you're going to get lift, even with a zero lift developer. It is likely that most of these lines that have a zero, zero lift developer are using AMP or MEA. So they can legally claim zero lift, but there is a high likelihood that they are also using ammonia, okay? So like I said, it's likely that most of these lines that have a zero lift are using AMP or MEA, but it's also likely that there is ammonia in there. So why are there zero lift developers on the market? So a lot of brands make the claim that their color can be a permanent and it can be a denim. This way, a stylist needs to only carry one line um, in their salon. But you need to know this, that it's a half truth, okay? The whole truth is that a permanent line using ammonia and MEA using a low developer can make it act like a demi act like a demi. It is not a true demi, but it can act like one. So there's definitely, definitely pros to this, but we need to understand the whole picture and not just half truths. Okay. The most important thing though, that you need to know is this. You cannot and should not use one manufacturer's zero lift developer with another manufacturer's color and expect a consistent result. What I said at the top of this, the developer <laughs> is not what is doing the lifting. It's not doing it alone. It has an alkalizer. So it's like the developer does the lifting, but the alkalizer is kind of like the spotter. They work together. So when you use a zero lift developer from X brand with color from Y brand, you still can get lift if Y brand's alkalizer is ammonia. So it's you, you cannot use this developer with that color and expect a consistent result. This is chemistry to some degree. These are chemicals. And brands spend a ton of time and money and research and development and resources for their products to work synergistically. You can't just be a mad chemist in the lab. I mean, you can, but then you don't have the consistency and there's no guarantee on the outcome unless you understand the whole big picture. So 
the point of this post was to give you, or this episode was to give you a little bit of clarity on what developer does. And for you to understand that just because it says zero lift, that it's not the full picture. It's depending on what is being mixed with that developer that's going to determine whether or not you are going to lift. So I hope, I hope this clears some things up for you um, about developer and zero lift developer in specifically. Um, at the end of the day, listen, I share with you what I have found. I share with you what I have learned. Take what works, leave what doesn't. Um, and experiment on your own, right? That is major, major power there for you to experiment on your own, for you to, you know, take what I say, take what they say, take that, 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 right? Put it all together and find what works for you. So if you are using Zero Lift Developer from X brand with Y brand and it's working for you, cool. Like, I just want you to understand it a little bit clearer, a little bit more um, specific on, on what is really going on with these, with these uh, colors and developers and all the truths and the half truths and all of that. So I hope this was helpful. I will catch you guys next week.